would you consider coaching? Maybe down the line, not not initially. Not right initially. Right now, you, it goes you back to like broadcast about. and be more executive, executive yeah, level. Yeah, right like now. That. Yeah, it like goes back to some shit about. like that. Yeah, maybe oh, owner. I'd rather go a little higher. Owner, first. okay. If I can go but up would you start high. at GM or you just want to come in and? Yeah, uh, it, if the opportunity to go straight to, to the top, I will. But like, I, I definitely would do something in the executive area, like a GM, maybe be a president. It just depends. You about let me see what a seven, seven or eight time all star. Eight, eight time all star. What would the wildest all star? Vegas. Vegas, yeah, I was there, boy. Vegas yeah. was crazy, bro. <laughs> Vegas. Vegas was crazy. I don't know how y'all made it to the game. Right, and that's why I, I remember David Stern said there would never, ever, ever be an all star <laughs> game <laughs> in <laughs> Vegas again. So. Uh, I, I don't foresee, like I was asked to do, I foresee like now an NBA team going to Vegas and, you know, right. rest in peace to David Stearns, but I don't know, bro. That, Vegas was out of control. That shit was outrageous. Yeah, hey, put it this way. I was supposed to be with Pac-Man that night. Damn. Yes, Damn. I just left, went to drop my pops off, cause he, but he was like, yeah, I'm gonna hang out with you young fella tonight, I was like, and then I thought about it, I was like, nah, bruh, I don't want, you gonna get tired. I don't wanna have to take you back to the hotel. <laughs> so nah, and then I was just like, nah, I'm chill. And then that happened. Damn. I was supposed to be there. Damn, man, you know God got a way of, man, putting yeah, his man. hand in the situation and yeah, working man. it out. I'm now, just, for those of you who don't know, man, Pac-Man is, uh, that, that, that's the young man who, uh, my home boy, Adam, Adam Jones, who had, um, Situation in Vegas, a fight, yep. altercation led into uh, some exchange, uh, exchange of gunfire. Right. Uh, but it's all resolved. I was with him know. the whole day, bro. We had just left Kenny Smith uh, poker tournament. Man. He's like, come on, baby, come on with me. Hey, man. That's the home. Uh, my, 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 my early years, you know, my early trap music years coming up in this shit, man. Me and Pat, man, been running the club in and out, out of town here, LA, other parts of the country. And he always been, you know, the same one. You dig what I'm saying? So it did surprise me when he whooped the nigga ass in the airport. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, it just made me right. feel good that he was in the right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but yeah, bro, God got a way of putting the hands and, and, and using testimonies like Pac-Man, mine, you know what I'm saying? Those who had to be drugged through the fire in order to come right. out clean on the other side of it, right. so we can look back and, you know, share our experiences yeah, with true. others. You're right about that. Um, so, eight all star. How many how many slam dunk contests did you did you compete in? I only did that one, 2000. Just that one? Yeah, because see, I, I, I'm going to explain myself, because I, I know you might say, how come? So, and I, I get asked a lot, but you know- You I never really, defended the title. No, nah, because see, I, I in my mind, so as a kid, I taped every one of them. You know what I'm saying? I had them on tape. I used to study them like it was a test on, at the end of the week. And, okay. you know, so I was just like, bro, that was my goal. I was like, one day I wanted to be in a dunk contest, win the dunk contest, hold that trophy up and get up out of there. I, w I didn't want to make, I didn't want you to see me in the dunk contest and you expect to see me every year and make it a career. Like, I didn't want you to just see me as a dunker. Mm. But I want you to see me as a dude that got a lot of skills, but bruh, when you throw that thing up there, you know what he gonna do with it. That's kind of <laughs> what it was, but I didn't want you to just put, I didn't want to be boxed in as just a dunker. And uh, I told a couple of athletes, a couple of guys who's been in the dunk contest and who's won the dunk contest, who's been in a couple of times, I said, don't get boxed in. Don't let, right. when people hear your name, be like, oh, that's the dude who be dunking. Right. That, that ain't what I, that's not what I wanted, you know, to, to be thought of as, but I wanted to actually go out there one night and display my ability, win one, and go ahead and get up out of there. Man, if I can recall, you 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 seem like a very mild mannered reserved, you know, gentleman right now. But I recall seeing a few games, man, when you got it in on the court. You had, you know, you had your shell. Uh, you know, uh, fist the cuffs on the court. Yeah. Which one? Which one would you say was the most memorable? Two of them. Um, 
the the one uh, I was playing, <laughs> we playing. I was with the Nets. We were playing the Spurs, bro. So Bruce Bond was, you know, a, a defender, and he's you know somewhat a dirty player. You know, he sneaky little you know dirty plays in there, whatever. So I was shooting the three, and I was going ham ham. I was like, I was I was having a good night. I was on the way to at least fifty plus. And, and that don't happen against the Spurs often, and you know, and not against him. But took a three, and he stuck his foot up under there, and I landed on it, and kind of rolled over, and looked at the, the official, like, "Bro, you ain't see that." He just told me to get up, and then Bruce Bowen ran down like nothing happened. Mm. I just got up, turned around, and just I was going straight for him, and I was willing to suffer whatever consequences. I had cocked back and went to throw the punch, and I caught the court. Courtney Kirk Kirkland, the running of the referee. I see him to this day. I still tell him thank you. Because I was going all for the jump. I was trying to shatter all that. that I, mean, it, 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 I didn't even care. Like, that was the one that I remember. And, you know, obviously I got kicked out the game. And it was just, you know, bad blood, obviously, between us four. Because I just felt like it was a dirty play that no, that they didn't. Nothing was done. Nothing, nobody was reprimanded for it. And, you know, and he, then have, he did. Have y'all spoke since then? Um, have y'all spoke since then? Nah, we really haven't. Yeah, y'all still got smoke, man. No, no, not at all. I mean, it don't like it ain't no like. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't really see, I don't really see him like that, you know, ever. So, uh, but during the season, like every, every time we were playing, like that, I was like, okay, now I got to give you this business again. So, and the other but one has that ever happened though, man? Like you get into it with, with a cat on the court, y'all either almost get the fight or get the fight, and then you catch him in the street somewhere. Has it ever spilled that side of the court? Yeah. Yeah, not with me, but it has. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple of these dudes. Like, yeah, they 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 ain't finished with what they started. Like, you know, because I'm gonna tell you one. I'm gonna tell you a player. Uh -huh. Okay, Jared Stackhouse. Jared Stackhouse. Okay, yeah. he's one of them. Okay, you wanted to you wanted to talk it like here. Nah, let's not. You can't break it up out here. Right. That's what he was on. You know, Jared, right. I love Jared. Yeah. So uh, there's That's some, there's a couple of stories. Jared Stackhouse is a Dan Stackhouse is a phenomenal entrepreneur now. Yes, he is. And he's a great coach. He's uh, coaching out there at Vanderbilt. He's a Tar Heel. He's one wow. of my guys. So, uh, and my, and I'm going to tell you this other story. May he rest in peace. I, Kobe and I played pickup. Kobe mm. and I played AAU ball together. Okay. In high school. Okay. So we always battling going after it. So it was one time in LA where it was going, I was going up and it was extra grabbing, holding, and pushing after the whistle. And, and this was, like, but, but this is AAU though, right? No, nah, this is the league. We playing it's at in the league. We playing MLA. Okay. MLA. And we got to uh, push it back and forth. And it got to like, bro, don't do that. Don't like, nah, you, you know, you know, bro, you ain't tough. Like, hold on. You, you know, it got, it, it got to there. So, you know, when you start talking, you be touch that nerve. you. Yeah, that's when he started. He's like, come on, bro. You mean, I'm like, coach, chill. Like, Kobe like, said chill, you bro. ain't tough. Yeah, that's where it started. She's like, bro, you ain't tough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, chill, chill, chill. I was like, bro, you chill. And it just got to push it back and forth. And that was the first time, like, one of my boys, like, it was, it, it went from, like, boy, bro, chill, like, you know, okay, to laugh it off to, like, it was just, like, really, I'm, I really want to fight you right now. But who like, was who was winning at the time? Because that has a lot to do with it. The game? Yeah, who was winning the game at the time? It was a, bro, it was a battle to win. We were going back and forth every play. And it was like, you know, it was back in the day when you can, you know, you know what I'm saying, yeah. everybody throwing elbows and, sh and shoulders. So it was one of them, like, I'm trying to get to the rack hard and, and go at, go through him and he doing the same. So it back in the time, it was like when the whistle blow, nobody was yeah. trying to give you an advantage. So you weren't going to just shoot the ball after the whistle just to get a free shot. Right. So he bumped me, fouled me the whistle blow, and I'm still trying to finish the shot. He grabbed me on the arm, I'm like, bro, chill, like, <laughs> and he's like, bro, bro, hold up, you ain't, you ain't tough, bro. I was like, wait, what? Like, come on, bro, we ain't doing this. Bro. And it just went back and forth, and we were trying, to, you know, it was really trying to do something. And then, you know, you know how it, 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 the reality, the league gonna break it up. But it never, we ain't really talked much after that. Like before games, it was kind of a, a quick dap, if that. And you know, it was just like, nah, I'm trying to kill you, you know. And he Man. felt the same, but it never spilled outside of that. Right. The competition was, was fierce. The competition yeah. was fierce, man. Who would you say, like, has there ever been a moment where you felt like, damn, them motherfuckers just cooked me? Bro, yeah. That dude we just talked about. <laughs> dude, Kobe. Yeah, AI. Kobe cooks you. AI. Yeah, man. I, he, they've got the T-Mac. 
Like I be, I be, man, me, T, you know, me and Matt used to go after each other. Like we were cousins and all, but bro, like it was just like I mean, that's what, it was for bragging rights, bro. Like after it, like man, hey, bro, that's messed up how you hit me on my lip, bro. You shouldn't have been a <laughs> funny, you know. It was like one of them, like bro, you tried, you tried to dunk on me tonight. Why you standing there? It, it's one of them type things. So, <laughs> that, like that was he. He's gotten the best of me a couple of times. Like, um, who used to give me the blues? Like AI obviously played against AI. Man, it was just. Like you, you, the playoffs in 2000, 2001, brother, like when we were going back and forth, he, he was scoring 40, uh, 40s and 50 points. I was scoring 50 points. Like, brother, you couldn't stop that, man. Couldn't stop no. that. And, and with Kobe, you couldn't stop I that. mean, yeah, man, it was good shit, man. It's too hell of a motherfucker to say. Looking back right now, what's something earlier in your career that you feel like got you, you know, upset or made you lose your temper in a game? It's kind of trivial to you now. Listening to the media when they tried to when they tried to put pit me and T Mac against each other. So mm. we played the first obviously first couple of years. So we had just found out we were cousins two years prior. So mm. his rookie yeah his rookie year we played AAU ball for Team Florida. He was on the younger t- team. I was on the older team for all these years. Never okay. knew we were cousins. The year he came out. As a to be drafted to Toronto as a rookie is when we found out that we were cousins. He was sitting at the uh, the family reunion table with my grandma, and she, my grand he was talking to granny. He was talking to my granny. He was like, "Yeah," she was like, "Oh, you from North Carolina?" Well, my grandson went to college at uh in 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 North Carolina. He was like, "Oh, okay. Who's your grandson?" She was like, "Vince Carter." He was like, "What?" Yeah. And after that, that's when I get the phone call. What's up, cousin? We've been cousins. So. You know that was that was that was family, and then the next year I get drafted to Toronto. Damn. So then when he leaves after two years, they tried to pit us against each other. Right. That was like that's the one thing I've always uh, held on to is like once I finally had a sit down conversation with him, like we were talking, like, bro, I ain't never say you know how it is. With, with right. Sitting, the media yeah, gonna always, twist it up. Exactly. You yeah. know, switch it up, take some words out, blah blah blah. So. After then, I, I always was very hesitant, cautious, and understood how the game works outside of the court, like with the media. You know, when you say something, some people don't care. They're going to say what they say. But, like, when it's talking about, they were trying to pit me versus my cousin. But, like, right. you know, that's that's just next level. Man, man, that's, I mean, that's some experience to teach you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like, like, what's important, you know what I'm saying? You got, if, you're, if, you're, if you're our family, that's going to supersede anything that the media, and it, you know, and this other shit got to do and, with it. And that's the funny thing you say, when you say that, uh, you know, I was like, bro, at, for, for, for a short amount of time, I was like, let me, let me call this dude, bro, and talk to him and, and really understand and just get an understanding, you know what I'm saying? So if there's a beef, family's supposed to talk it out, whether we want to hear it or not. And, right. You know what I'm saying? So we, when we start, when we talked it out, he's like, bro, I ain't even say that. And so now we going undercover, we we doing media. So I'm here and they say, oh, T-Mac said this. Oh, did he? <laughs> nah, that ain't how it went down. So, you yeah. know, now like I, say, I live with that forever. Like I understand. So that's why I want to be a part of the media. Chasing yeah. the <laughs> That's what's up. That makes sense. You know, you, you usually things change from the inside. Facts. Um, so I want to know if the game has changed at all for you. I mean, if you're doing what you love for a living. You've been doing it for 22 years, but from the time you got in the game to right now, like, has it changed to the point where it's more like work now? <clears throat> yes. Yes. And I say that because I come in, I'm trying to establish myself and I'm on top of the world. And, and you know, I'm, 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 I'm the franchise player, go-to guy. And obviously you go through ups and downs, you don't win, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. But when, you, when you're older trying to play this game and the game is in their eyes, the game is faster, don't get me wrong. The game is a lot faster. More teams play faster than what it was back in the day. Mm-hmm. But now when they look at, they look at your age and they don't look at your production. Right. You know what I'm so I, I walk into a meeting and I'm like, yeah, you know, but how many games can you play? Like, bro, look at look at the resume. In my 40s, how many games did I play? I, out of 82 games, I missed one game last year. Damn. The year before that, I missed one game that I couldn't play. 
Right. Now, if the coach sit me out and then play me for whatever, because if we want to sit you out because, you know, you're older, we want to make sure. Bro, like, I train to, to, to be able to do this. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've been doing for 20-plus years. So right. that's the tough part of it, like, having to deal with. So, but other than that, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Man, dope. It's been dope seeing you here around the city in Atlanta, man. Man, yeah. I love it, man. That, it was a, it's, it, it's the right time to be here for me. Right <laughs> in my forties, <laughs> instead of my, you right know, on. my twenties and thirties, you know what I'm saying? Especially, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey. But it's been, uh, you know, I had family who who lived here uh, throughout the time, and you know, it's close to home. Like, uh, like I said, I got, I'm from Florida, and I got fed, my my daughter, my oldest lives in, in in Charlotte. So this is this is, uh, I mean, it, it's all kind of this is up and coming, all kind of businesses, all kind of just entrepreneurs opportunity, uh, just. Influential people like I, I love being. I, I, I'm not a super super historian, but when history is in front of me, I'm listening. And you get that opportunity every day, man. I got the, uh, you know, I, I'll say I got the opportunity to talk with Mr. Uh, Andrew Young. And yeah, Ambassador Young, man. Obviously, definitely. obviously, you know, Trailblazer. Yes, visionary. I've had the opportunity to talk with him, and you know, I, I enjoy stuff like that. Like I, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm in deeply into music. I grew up in, okay. in music. Uh, as, a, as a kid, I, I was in the band. I used to write music for the band. I used to do all that. Like, you know, I'm in the South, so you know what the marching bands are from the South. Right, was, <laughs> right. You know, you know how that go. I'm, I was a drum major, so I, I have, you know, um, a, a, a super passion for music. Um, you know, I can engineer my own. I, I built a studio at home because I love it from one of my boys who was doing it. And, you know, just that's just something I wanted to do. Like, when I'm building my house, I'm like, all right, let me get a weight room. Let me get a gym. I need a theater, and we are gonna put a uh, studio right here. <laughs> just right. That's I just love the music. So it always seemed like you know all rappers wanted to be athletes, and all athletes wanted to be rappers at some point in time in their right. life, right. in some way or another. You know what I'm saying? Um, have you ever played ball with a rapper, and you were more impressed with their skills than you thought you would be? Uh, there's a few. Uh, first of all, Master P was my teammate. What in Toronto? You played with you know, P? So back in, huh? yeah, so P nice. was P. He he originally played with Charlotte, and then that next year he came to us in Toronto. So my that's second nice. year, this is back when uh, the ice on my wrist shine like a light. You remember when that came out? That's, that's right. when he was my teammate. So uh, he, I mean, he literally put out an album doing uh, training camp. <laughs> so Damn. and he was playing. Uh, so but how his, was it playing with P? Bro, it was crazy, bro, because that's when, you know, No Limit was on top and, and doing their thing. So it hit the following. Just, he, didn't, he didn't make the team for regular season, uh, but for preseason, following us everywhere, just seeing the, the following and the love he got and watching his brother, Silk Can Who. Right. Silk Can Who. Silk Can Who. So why did you know Silk make it? I, bro, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. I just, like, I think P got to it first, so it would have been kind of tough to where, you yeah. know, for that, and, and then his Romeo, Romeo can hoop. Little Romeo, he can hoop. He played. He, he was on the team at USC, I think, out there. Uh, who else? I know. I know Brian McKnight can ball. I, I know. Um, it's a couple of people, but yeah, man, it's it's some it's some guys out there. I was like, yeah, not, not bad, bad, not bad. What about Stay you? Bad, you hoop? Nah, man, that's when I ain't never really be honest with you, bro. When I when I was growing up. I was always the youngest and the littlest on the block, man. You know what I'm saying? I never got picked. So I, I, I uh, took it upon myself to go up to the basketball court, man, and kind of like flatten out the ball. So right, right, play. right. Oh, you ain't going to pick me. Then nobody yeah. played. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I never got good at basketball. I never right. really worked at it. I never worked at it hard enough. Right, um, right. It was always ra rapping and hustling was always like kind of just what I had said in my mind that I was going to do, right. but I always have a, I have a love for the sport and, you know, I have a competitive spirit. If mm -hmm. you pick me for a team in a pickup game, I'm going to find a way to contribute. If I don't right. score a lot of points, I'm going to get rebounds and steals and create, right. you know what I'm saying, uh, Make create opportunities best. with assists. I just, you know, I ain't going to just sit though, but I'm not right. the best, I ain't the best athlete on the court. Gotcha. Um, so tell me like. Oh, I just thought about it. Quavo. 
I, I, watched, Quibble, I was impressed. Man, I think Quavo could do anything, bro. Right. You know I, mean? I was in, I was impressed. But I watched him who I was like, bro, okay. But I know in two chains, I, I know they played in high school. I know chains played in high school, so you know. Right. Quavo can who Dirk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dirk, Dirk who, who. Uh G Herbo can who. Yeah, yeah. I saw I seen who. Yeah. I seen the video of uh, Herbo in them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a few cats out there, man. They, yeah. you know what I mean? They going, yeah. they going for it. Travis, Travis Scott. Can who yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what I'm saying? I just, I, I just enjoy watching the two cultures come together. Come together. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, there's a huge cultural presence, uh, uh, uh in of basketball in hip hop and right. there's a true presence of hip hop in basketball. So just right. seeing the two come together has always been real cool, to, you know what I mean, just to to observe it. And um, I think I think it's what's needed, man. I, I, to be honest with certainly. you, the, you know, the love of the game, you know, and people what what basketball does for people, like you said, you enjoy watching it and going to see games and just watch athletes do what they do and yeah. then you can incorporate the the our culture if you would, uh, mm -hmm. our culture into the game. Right. Um, or not only us as African-Americans, but the other cultures who come to, uh, you know, who, who indulge in our music as well, right. enjoy it. Right. So when they come right. there, they get the best of both worlds. And I think that's just what's needed. I really do. And that's what's that missing makes, right now in this pandemic. That makes sense. Now, would you, so, so would, you, would you consider coaching? Maybe down the line, not, not initially. Not right right now, you, it goes you'd rather back like broadcast about. and be more executive, executive yeah, level. Yeah, right like, now. Yeah, it like goes back to some talking. shit like that. Yeah, maybe oh, owner. I'd rather go a little higher. Owner, if can, okay. If I can go but up would you start high. at GM or you just want to come in and? Yeah, uh, it, if the opportunity to go straight to, to the top, I will. But like, I, I definitely would do something in the executive area, like a GM, maybe a president. It just depends. Uh, but like like we talked about earlier, it, being a coach. It was a GM and president. So like, the GM is the one who's making all of the the the, the trades. Okay. And he's the one that kind of is the day-to-day -day guy. Like that's that's okay. a real job. He's going to scout and he's on the phone. And some 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 GMs are president, so they have dual jobs, but in the president, he does some overseeing, but the GM is the one that's on the phone making them phone calls every day. So, you know, I'd have to think hard about that. Like I like to see, I like to try to and put put teams together. So maybe assist the GM. He 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 assists with those, but yet still works with players as well. That's mm -hmm. maybe something you see me doing. If if ownership doesn't happen now, I would do like something like assistant GM. Just, okay. just get started because I want to learn the game. I don't just want to be in it just to be in it and don't know what I'm doing. Right. That's I mean that's a key point. That's a key point. You talked about earning it earlier, so I mean I see where you you know yeah. I see where you're going with that. But yeah. I'm glad you, you you said GM because that goes with our next question. You're the GM of the Hawks. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. If, you, if you're the GM of the Hawks, uh, what do we need to do to bring Atlanta its first championship? How, what moves do we need to make? I, I, as a player who's been around in many different eras, and seeing many different super teams, I think you need a balanced squad of young, energetic, youthful talent, and you need veteran presence that can contribute, not just can sit there and use their voice. You need, we need, I think, I, if I'm the GM, I'm looking for some veteran presence to help all this youth. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like seeing teams that has a team of 17 players and 13, 14 of them are 23 or younger. Mm. I just feel like with, you know, with it just, it's, I'm, I don't want to use, I, I hate to use the term blind leading the blind, but it's the inexperienced leading the in, inexperienced. So mm. at least you have, if you have five, four to five veterans on your team who's been through the fire, who don't get rattled in, in big games or when they're on a four game losing streak or so, something like that. Right. Now these guys have somebody to turn to and they learn the game. You learn the right. game the right way. When you get to the big game, it's nothing because you, you've been educated on it. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. So given what we know about the free agency and who's up, you know what I'm saying, in the next, in the offseason, mm -hmm. 
who's the best fit for Atlanta that you think? So if it's not possible to land another big name, and see, we have some young talent, so I, it's it's tough to go land a, a, a big name. And and then what do you do? It just depends on what that big big name is uh, and who he is. But uh, free agency, uh, good names. I just, I yeah, free agency. Say, I want to get a say, hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> and she goes now. Nah. She's like, okay, I speak now. No, um, I would like to see, just seeing what's out there. Like you know, now veterans it, or players look at teams like, okay, what they look like, what these teams look like. You know what I'm saying? If they're not close to winning, everybody don't want to come there. So it just depends on you know what's out there. But I, I'm definitely saying go get some experienced veterans who have uh who who have some playoff experience because that's what's needed because the goal of the team is to make the playoffs next year. So if you want to make the playoffs, you need to get some guys who've been there before to put you uh in that position and who's been there when it's time. So I don't know who all the free agents is. That's why I can't really give you any names. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. See how I deflected to Yeah, yeah, you know, man, you ready hey man, you ready for the media. What you you said. are ready for broadcasting <laughs> right now, brother. Uh <laughs> Hey man, it's been lovely, man, having you here as a guest. I uh, I salute you, respect you. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been marveling at your career from the time you came in the league, bro. It's been impressive what you've done. Uh, how many teams you've done it for, and still that you maintain a level and a standard of success throughout your entire career, twenty two years, man. Um, I wish you nothing but the 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 most uh successful years outside of the league and you, whatever man. you whatever you set out to do man i wish you nothing but success at it now here expeditiously we have a tradition our tradition is the word of the week all right yeah. now the word of the week is usually uh it's a word about the conversation in reference to the conversation uh in reference to the guest or in reference to environments that the guests may have endured. So this word for you that I came up with. Oh, good. Thank you. Whew. I'm going to be like, oh, hold on. Let me think. Well, you thought I was feeling now. Hey, I, I was over here thinking hard, but I was like, uh, all right. OK. You know That's Give me not a bad idea. I'm going to try that sometime. We've done it a couple of times, but I'm going to do it more unsuspectingly. Um, yeah. Nefarious. Is the word yes, baby? You're hungry. Okay, get can daddy please finish this? I got about five more minutes, and I'll be right with you. Okay. Okay, we're gonna find you something right quick. Okay, Just give me five more minutes. All right, sweet baby. All right. One more time, that word. Okay, this word, the word of the week, nefarious. 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 Nefarious means flagrantly wicked or evil, all right? And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use it in a sentence so everybody who's listening can pretend like they've known this word their whole life, go use it on their own. Right. Here we are. When the fight broke out on the court, the opposing team blamed Vince Carter. However, I continued to defend him and shared that I did not believe he had any nefarious motives. Okay. However, it's in first person, and I don't believe that that is the proper use, so I'm going to try it again, all right? When the fight broke out on the court, the opposing team blamed Vince Carter. However, he, however, he continued to defend him and shared that he did not believe there were any nefarious motives. I think that is a better use there you in go. context. Okay. Right. So that so the word for the week for this particular episode is nefarious. Nefarious. Uh, I'm using you, that too. Hey man, Somebody. you have had nefarious games where you dunked on motherfuckers and left them posterized throughout these twenty two years, man. We all appreciate your contribution to the league and the culture, man. With love and respect, we salute you. Thank you for coming to expeditiously, bro. My the man. legendary historical Vince Carter. My man. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.